everyone, what is going on you guys? Today I have a really fun and exciting video for you all. I am going to be showing you my process for making my Edelgard wig from start to finish. If you guys enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and joining our family and letting me know down below. I have a bunch of other wig and cosplay tutorials that I will link in my end card as always for you guys to check out after this video. But anyway, let's get on with the tutorial. So starting off, I recommend that you learn from my mistakes and build the base wig first before you make the crown or any of the additional parts. It's just so much easier when you have the proportions of the wig figured out first to then base the crown and horns around instead. So my wig is a full frontal two inch deep full lace wig from the brand It's a Wig in the style Banks. It's in the color 613 which is a really standard bleach blonde color across many brands that sell everyday real women type wigs. This wig actually was what I used for my Zelda and I figured given its construction it would be a good match for Edelgard as well. 613 is a color that's really close to Arda's Titanium Blonde, so I'm going to be using that for all of the wefts that I add into the wig. It's not a 100% perfect match since 613 is a little bit more yellow and Titanium Blonde can kind of have like a green cast in certain lightings, but it's not really something you're going to notice unless you're directly looking for it. So our first step is going to be to convert this wig into being able to go up into ponytails. If you use a different base wig, that is already designed to go up to ponytails, you can kind of skip this step. But at least from my knowledge, I don't think either Epic Cosplay or Arda sell a lace front wig that is designed to be in ponytails, so if you want the lace front aspect, you are going to have to go forward with these steps. So first, I split the wig into two halves and made a clear center part down the back. To hide the wefts in this area, we are going to sew down new wefts to create a vertical center part. So taking my titanium blonde wefts and a curved needle, I sew down a strip to the center of the wig. It's important that you have this wig stretched over a wig head so that when you're sewing the wefts, the stitches aren't too tight that they impede the wig from expanding. If you do this when the wig is just laying loosely, you can risk sewing too tightly and having the wig lose a lot of its stretch. I sewed a second line of wefts right next to the first, then I flipped over the wefts and heat trained them to lay in the new direction. We are going to do this process again with the opposite side. So you're going to have your third weft lay right next to the first two as close as you can to the folded over area. And you're going to repeat that again with the fourth weft. Split the wefts down the middle and heat train the second set to go in the opposite direction. So for the bases of the buns, we are going to make two high ponytails that are very far forward on the head right above the ear tabs. I sectioned off a part of the lace front section to become the two face bearing parts that Edelgard has before I started making the ponytails so they wouldn't get added in. Once we have the high ponytails, we can make them into the buns. For this, you can either use a sock with the toe cut off and rolled down in a pinch, but I actually prefer using an actual bun maker that is designed for this purpose. They are really cheap and you get them in a variety of natural colors, so you can find one that will match your wig pretty well. I start off by smoothing the hair into the bun maker and then pulling it down so that only the ponytail tips are sticking out. Then I twist the bun maker inside out, pulling more and more of the ponytail inside of itself. This is a very tedious process and it's going to take you a couple tries to make the perfect bun. I did three attempts on camera, but it probably took me over 10 tries on each side to get my most ideal bun. My tips for getting a very compacted and even bun is to hold the bun maker perpendicular to the hair when it's flowing down, which means it's off frame for a lot of my video, but I find that it makes the hair go into the bun maker more evenly all around. Also, as I pull the bun maker up the ponytail, I twist it slightly, which makes the fibers tangle around and become more compacted. Once your bun is constructed, you can secure it to the wig head with bobby pins. Take the two face framing sections and wrap them around a curler and use steam to set them in place. Leave them around for at least five hours in this state or better yet, overnight. Take the curlers out and liberally apply hairspray over the entire wig. So now onto the horns and the crown. I mostly have photos as opposed to videos documenting my process for this, but hopefully it will be still just as informative for you guys. I also really quick wanted to show you how I made her necklace. This is also two layers of craft foam, as well as this added piece in the back that is used to hide the closure, which is some Velcro that I have sewn through the layers of craft foam. So both the horns and the crown were made with a base layer of craft foam with some accents in foam clay and resin. I will have links to my patterns for all of the crown horns and jewelry pieces that I make down below. 
The crown is two layers of craft foam with a resin gem in the center and then some foam clay on top to make the little cross shape. The horns are also a craft foam base with foam clay to make all of the ridges to give it a more of organic feel. It was then heat shaped to go around the buns. If you can tell from the photos, I actually heat shaped it after I painted it, which is definitely not the most ideal setup. I think I kind of forgot how much heat shaping I was going to need to do to make them look right on the buns, which is why I definitely recommend having your base wig done before you start any of the armor pieces. Obviously heat guns are intended mostly not for heating foam, they're intended for getting paint off of walls. So if you apply heat to acrylic paint, it's going to make it ripple and bubble up a little bit. It's not super noticeable unless you're looking for it, but it definitely gives it a very different texture than if you hadn't applied heat to the paint beforehand. So ideally you want to heat foam it and then you can seal it with Mod Podge and then paint it with acrylic paint. So the way that the horns attach to the buns is using two wires to anchor it to the inside of the wig and then there's an alligator clip to hold it upright. And the crown has two clips that go in opposite directions into the forehead area. What I did was made the base gold horn entirely and then threaded some wire through some holes that I made into the back of the horns. Then I attached them to the black base and threaded those wires through two holes I had made into that base. So it's kind of sandwiched between the two layers of foam and becomes more secure. I then added all of the final gold details to the back of the horns. For the black dangly parts, they are also foam with a gold grommet added for stability. And I have them attached to a key ring, which is then attached to a jump ring. So they kind of flop freely on the bottom of the wig. So the way I attach the horns is I take the wig off of the stand and holding the wires tightly together, I stick them through the center of the bun. I want the wires to poke out as closely together as possible. Um, so this can take several tries to get it in the right position. Once they're in, I pull them tightly so the horns are very flush and close up to the buns. And I twist the wires together, folding them upwards into the wigs so they won't end up poking my head. Once this is done to both horns, I can return the wig head to the stand and then use the alligator clips to secure the horns. And now the wig is all done. I actually made a really handy travel bag using an Art of Wigs tutorial so that I can leave her on the wig head when I take her to cons without her being crushed. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I am so happy with how she turned out and there were a couple points where I was a little bit unsure of how she was looking, especially before I shaped the horns. I think once I did that, it really tied the whole look together. I'm just really happy and proud of all the work I did and I'm so excited to wear her to Anime USA this year. I will make another video in the future as I make more of her costume showing all of the process for that, but for right now I have Edelgard from the neck up to present to you guys. Thank you guys again so much for watching, please consider subscribing or checking out some more of my videos in the end card if you want to see more. But that's all for me today and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!